I am Ginny and I was born in 1994. This is my teddy bear and his name is Kelvin. He was named after my first friend in nursery. During my first month celebration, my mother's colleague gave us a hamper and in it was Kelvin. Kelvin was my first toy for as long as I could remember and he was my companion throughout my entire childhood. I remember hugging Kelvin while I was drinking milk from the baby bottle and when I went to my first toddler nursery where I made my first friend, he accompanied me there. As I moved on to kindergarten, I brought Kelvin along and he was my companion when I was in a new environment and didn't know anybody. As a toddler, I was rather tough with Kelvin and he lost both his eyes and half his nose. As they couldn't be sewn back, my father drew back his eyes with a permanent marker and continuously did that every time they faded. Kelvin showed his age as he became bald where I always held him by, slowly transforming from the pink bear I once knew to half grey. Even though more and more soft toys were given to me, Kelvin was still my most treasured teddy bear. As such, what made me choose Kelvin for this project was because he was my first friend and companion, an integral part of my childhood and is still around after all these years in one piece. Let's take a step back in history to how the teddy bear came about. In November 1902, while on a hunting trip to Mississippi, US President Theodore Roosevelt refused to shoot a black bear that the hunting guides clubbed and tied to a tree. Calling it unsportsmanlike, he declined to shoot the defenseless animal. This became a national incident, and a political cartoon about it by Clifford Berryman appeared in the Washington Post on November 16, 1902. Issues with the implied meaning of the initial drawing made the cartoon go through several iterations, and the bear in the cartoon became smaller and cuter. Toy maker Maurice Mitch Tom saw the cartoon and decided to turn it into a stuffed toy, which became widely popular and made his toy making business successful. Teddy bears became an icon in the children's world and are very popular gifts be it from parents to young children, between couples or even pets. Teddy bears are comfort objects and serve as companions to young children. Children will usually personify them by giving them names. Teddy bears signify love and security due to their friendly look and being very cuddly. The design of teddy bears brings back nostalgic memories in people as many grew up with one. The gender neutrality in design, unlike dolls, means that it can be for children of either gender. Touching on agency of objects, Jeanette Hoskins suggests that things have agency as they are created for a purpose. Using Jail's ideas, objects with agency has an impact and an effect on people going in line with Latour. We can say that Teddy Bear is an agency as it defined how children's toys were and how they interacted with their toys. When toy maker Maurice Mitch Tom made the stuffed Teddy Bear, it was to help his toy making business. But the Teddy Bear allowed stuffed animals, which was unpopular as toys and initially used for Egyptian worship, to become a very popular children's toy. Young children below the age of 6 months get attached to something known as transitional objects and these provide comfort and security in their early growing stage. These objects aid the child in growing up by honing social skills and confidence when they treat these objects as they were human beings. Like how a child has a tea party with his or her stuffed toys, teddy bears with their cute and friendly look fulfilled this need in children and as such, became a very popular stuffed toy. Kelvin can also be thought of as a commodity as it came from a hamper from a store, in which it became a singular item. Kelvin also cannot be easily placed by monetary value as it has a shared history and life, and has become one of a kind. And according to Arjun Apadurai, a commodity can be anything intended for exchange. He dismisses the value in other moments in the life of a thing, saying only anthropologically relevant moments when a commodity is exchanged between humans are the important moments. However, this does not consider the sentiment of the life of the object as the life of the object is what constitutes the commodity to become a singular item to the owner. In the matter of the unfetish, Sasha Newell talks about hoarding of items and the spirit in objects. When I was born, my family was living in a four-room flat. 
I spent 5 years of my childhood there, the best years with Kelvin, before moving house in 1999 and stayed till the present day. My father brought his hi-fi equipment including speakers, CD players, amplifiers and, he, and his beloved vinyl turntable, all of which was bought when he was still a university student and while he barely started work. I brought Kelvin along and I spent the remaining of my childhood years there where Kelvin slowly became an old and bald teddy bear. Even though I no longer play with Kelvin, my parents still kept him in a safe place for me where he wasn't forgotten. Kelvin reminded my family of a time when I was a young child and contained a vivid memory of my childhood and the places it had been. Initially, we may not notice the significance of objects that are part of our lives, as when the object is a part of our life, we tend to take it for granted and not appreciate its existence. Only after it is no longer a significant part of life, then we appreciate the existence of an object. These objects come back to be la important later on in life as nostalgia. As said by Parkin's reference to rise of morning, whereby the personal mementos taken by people in flight may indeed rearticulate social cultural identity if and when suitable conditions or resettlement requires for the retelling of the stories they contain. From mouse onwards, we have come to the conclusion that the idea of lives of persons and objects as becoming mutually constituted. This is similar to Kelvin, where just by the visuals of Kelvin, it is possible to tell that Kelvin is an old toy and has gone through a long period of time. When people look at Kelvin, they will question where did he come from and how long has it been since first receiving it. This will lead to a nostalgic memory of how I spent my childhood and how I've been through thick and thin with Kelvin. Kelvin can also be thought of having the same significance as that of a photograph, which is indexical and iconic. According to Elizabeth Edwards, photographs have inevitably linked meanings and objects, which are lasting yet uncertain. Photographs infuses almost all levels of remembrance, even those of which is not directly part. The relationship between objects and remembrance and the way in which it obtains its privileged position as a pipeline of resemblance is reflected through the object's materiality. For objects express a desire for remembrance and the act of keeping an object is, like other souvenirs, an act of faith in the future. It's been with me for like 18 years and I can't sleep without it every night. Yeah, I have a polar bear and I will hug it to sleep. If I don't have that, I can't sleep. It's just not appealing and super distorted. 